Today on City Line, it's Thanksgiving at the cottage and we're feeling deja vu. How many times have we done turkey on this show? Oh. <laughs> we do it a lot. Chef Randy has a turkey recipe that will make your Thanksgiving meal prep stress free. Day of when people are showing up, you're just like hanging out in the kitchen like <laughs> this. You're looking good. Then Julia Grieve has specialty cocktails for the big day. I am the signature drink girl. Love like it. I'm like slightly obsessed with it. But make sure you follow the recipe closely to avoid disaster. The recipe calls says that it makes for 16 cocktails. Yeah. Or one if your family starts talking about politics. <laughs> and later, want to mix it up this Thanksgiving? What about moving the whole feast outside? Sarah Gunn has some inspired ideas. I happened to be walking by the dog section of Home Sense and I saw these velvet cushions. These are for the dogs. They're dog beds. It's City Line with Tracy Moore. Oh, hey, welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome to City Line. It's all about Thanksgiving at the cottage. Come on in. All right, we got Chef Randy Feltis in the kitchen cooking up an incredible Thanksgiving meal. Sarah Gunn, okay, she's going outside. She's got a beautiful picnic tablescape, which I cannot wait to get to. But first, let's talk Thanksgiving dinner and guests, and guests that might be coming last minute with the one and only Julia Grieve. <laughs> Jules, gorgeous tablescape, but I gotta ask you this. How many people come to your house for Thanksgiving? Okay, Thanksgiving is a big deal in our house, yeah. for sure, growing up as well, because we always were at the cottage. I it's guess. like the official end of the season. you got to close the cottage up. Yeah. So my mom tapped out on thanks in, uh, hosting Thanksgiving dinner yeah. at 52 people. <gasps> that's, mm -hmm. that's Christmas. I know, right? Like, that is a lot of people for Thanksgiving. I know, but we needed their help to put the shutters on, the canoe in, right? And right. then we gave them right. turkey and sent them home. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so now are you doing good I am ho and I'm hosting this year, and I'm doing 22. Okay, that's still okay. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if you want to put together, like, sort of scrounge together a th Thanksgiving dinner, you got more people saying, I'm coming. Exactly. What do you do? You know, the, the easiest thing to do is just to work with things that you already have. I yeah. think one of the most important things to take into consideration with Thanksgiving is we want to remove all that stress and all that pressure on us. Please. Leave it over to the guy cooking the turkey. Yeah. Sorry, Randy. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the Good idea call. of just finding things that we have around. So, yeah. I always love to do that this tablescape, something like Look this, this, right? This is what I call all the bulls. All the bulls? The bulls. Edible. Consumable. <laughs> yep. You know, recyclable. Recyclable. Compostable. Yes. All the bulls. And it's just literally things I've had in the house or at the fridge yeah. or sending the kids outside to grab things. Always works really well. The other thing I think, Tracy, that also sets the tone nicely yeah. is the craft paper as your tablecloth. See, this is good because it immediately says we are not having, like, a queen's dinner here. Absolutely. This is casual. It is. It's no, casual, I, elevated. Thank you. Very but, important. like, hang out and, like, have some fun. Take your shoes off and, like, like you know. Exactly. Or keep your shoes on. Just saying. Or maybe. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, saying. we're not even getting into <laughs> that controversy again. Again. <laughs> you know, Don't even worry about that. Um, but uh, th exactly <laughs> that. This helps with the cleanup as well. And oh, no yeah. cranberry sauce on grandma's tablecloth. And it's great. And put the crayons on so the kids are occupied. I think that's really important. Love that. Again, yeah. we want to relieve the stress, right? So yeah. dinner is taking too long. Play some games at the table like this. It's so great. Tic-tac-toe. There you go. Have some fun with that. And then the kids are busy. And I like that you said, take the, tell the kids to go outside and get some stuff. For the exactly. Centipede. Like leaves. You can yeah. use leaves as your play settings, right? Yeah. So there's one for Randy. That so is very get the kids cute. out there picking which ones they think is perfect for grandma. Yes. That idea. I always find at Thanksgiving, there's not always a lot to do. You're kind of sitting around waiting to eat. So get do the tablescape when the kids arrive. Yes. Use the apples to hold the candles. Can I just you, show you how genius that cute this that is? is? If you go apple picking and you yes. get bushel upon bushel yes. of apples, you've done the crumble, you've done the pie, you've done all the things. Now you can do a centerpiece. Right? That is a beautiful idea. You have a tip for this though. Right, it's super easy. Don't cut them too soon because they do go a bit brown. Yeah. No big deal. No big but deal. But you cut them sort of like when your guests arrive, just cut a little circle, put the tea light in. Yes. And Tracy, you can still use those after because you know me. I'm not going to well, waste anything. Well, we are going to use them apple because we know after because we know how much apple exactly. costs. Exactly. So you can chop so them all up, puree them up, and use yes. them in anything you want. Other quick note is don't stress out about your plates. If they don't match, they don't need to. Yeah. 52 people. Let's get serious. Yeah. So they don't yeah, yeah, have yeah. to match. If you can go with a theme or color, sort of white plates, if you don't have enough, your neighbors will have some. Yeah. Aunt Judith might have white plates. 
ask her to bring them. Yes. So keeping it simple is, I think, the most important thing to do. I did not even notice there were mismatched plates. Right? So this is not the stuff that counts. The stuff that counts is that you're surrounded, hopefully, by people you like. That's number right? one. Right? Because it's Thanksgiving. One. So okay, I'm going to show you like, a yeah, napkin really quick, Tracy, because the napkin sort of elevates that place. Okay. I think I always use a cloth napkin if you can, because, you know, reusable. Yeah. Um, now, there brand. are so many things that you could do with napkins. Okay. But the record, you can make turkeys. Are we I'm making not turkey? Make a turkey? No, I'm not making one. Okay, good. I didn't watch the YouTube video long <laughs> enough. It was one for hours. But this is my favorite thing to do is the little fold, which I, creates a little pocket. So you could put gifts in there. You could do whatever you this want. This is what we're venturing to make yes. then. Let's Very see how well I do. Okay. okay, so you're going to fold it in half. Then you're going to fold up once. Okay. Okay. Like, see, I'm going from the bottom like up. Fold up again, like that. Like nice. That. Then flip it over. Yeah. Okay. And then just fold the sides in. Which sides? Like this side. Oh, like this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You and got them, it, baby. And then you got like it. that. And you're done, and then flip it back over. See? Oh, and then you I can put your it. little leaves in there. Yes. If you want to do, I don't know, a little bit of cash for some of the kids at the table, whatever. You just put you know. cash in mine. <laughs> Put it in my, dad, my dad is like the twenty dollar bill dropper. Yes. Like all the kids are like, "Is Papa coming? Is Papa?" Like, I love your dad. Dad is always the one that like, slips you the twenty. Why do people think cold hard cash is unromantic? I know, it's lovely. Exactly. Like it's just so stick good. a fifty dollar bill in there. I'm your best friend. Yeah. Okay, okay, so the so you've other, got other thing I want to show well. you really quickly. This is one of my favorite things. I do this every single year. This is a too. thankful tree. Oh. Okay, so I went out and collected branches, send the kids out to get them, and you ask all your guests to write down what they're thankful for. Nice. You hang it on the tree, then during dinner, yeah. we can all talk about this to keep the conversation going yeah. and away from politics or anything yes. stressful that Uncle Bob wants to talk about. Yes. You ask him what he's thankful for. You calm down, Uncle Bob. You better, man. So I love this. My dog, my friends, my family. It's my absolute favorite part of Thanksgiving that we actually talk about what we're thankful exactly. for. I like to hear it from the teenagers. I know, it is. It's like, they really get really good. thoughtful and interesting. Perspective, and, and I really love that. Too. Okay, and the last one that really just sort of finishes it off, you yeah. have a little take-home gift. Aww. And you can put this together so quickly, so affordably. This is a pot st steamer. Do okay. you know what I mean? Like a scent. So you would put this all into a pot of water, boil it, and your whole room will smell. I call it Thanksgiving in a jar. I love that. So just some dried oranges, dried apples. Again, you can do this when your guests arrive, so yeah. they're doing it together. Uh, cinnamon, uh, anise, cardamom, and also some... Um, what am I looking what for? What are those again? Cloves. Oh my gosh, thank you Cloves. so much. Throw it in a jar. And when everyone leaves, they get to take one home with them. Yes. And it's just a nice little gift. Jules, it's absolutely stunning. <laughs> thank you for that. We're going to break. We have so much more coming up. It's Thanksgiving at the Cottage. We like it here. It's very nice. It's very Lovely. Welcome back. What is Canadian Thanksgiving without Canadian turkey? You're not the turkey. We're going to make Some the days. turkey. Yes. Chef Randy Feltis in the kitchen making turkey. Now, how many times have we done turkey on this show? Oh. <laughs> we do it a lot. Because you can't think about Thanksgiving without thinking about turkey. That's right. right. It's just the way it's got to be. Now, you can have other things to fortify, but it's you got to have the bird. you got to have the Canadian turkey. You have deep fried it. You have baked it. You have done all of the things to the turkey. What are we doing today? So it's such a versatile bird. You can do all those kind of things. Yeah. You can throw it on the grill. You can smoke it. But I'm oh, yeah. all about the space when it comes to Thanksgiving. Okay. So I want to break it down and I want to save fridge space and I also want to cook it a little bit faster you don't need yes. to cook it for nine hours you don't need to be intimidated so no. here's the hack okay call your butcher and ask them to break down your turkey oh. so today what we are making is a breast lot and leg turkey with a lemon thyme gravy that looks amazing. Doesn't that look beautiful? So the butcher broke all this down, and then he gave me the carcass and all the good stuff inside. Okay. So I can then make my gravy. So you put all your work into the preparation. Yeah. So day of, when people are showing up, you're just like hanging out in the kitchen <laughs> like, like this. You're looking good. You know Whatever. what I mean? You're not sweating. You're not sweating. Your hair's did. Everything's you're on top fantastic. Of it. But you have to ask the butcher for those that extra stuff, right? Or are they automatically going to give you the neck and the giblets and they all that stuff? They should give it to you, okay. but make sure you do ask as well. Or or okay. you can do it yourself. I picked this up at the grocery store. Yeah. This is a 15 pound bird. It took me like six minutes to break it down. Beautiful. Right? And so then okay. all we're going to do then is I did brine it. I'm a brine guy. Yeah. Does your fam, does Leo brine? Uh, he does a bit of brining and brining is important for a couple of reasons, which I wouldn't know because I never make the turkey. <laughs> 
Why do we want to brine? It's going to keep the moisture inside the bird. It's going to okay. make it super tender, but it's also going to give you a great opportunity to season it and to hit it with some more flavor. So I've got flavor some apple town. juice in here. I've got some rosemary, some garlic, a little bit of chili Ooh. flakes, and some lemon. Yeah. It's good times. And you put this in a in a in a bag, like a plastic bag, so this doesn't even take up much space. So this will slide right into your fridge. Yeah. Right, and you can wash it after and reuse it. Yeah. So that way the turtles and the turkeys are happy. Everyone's right. getting along. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it doesn't take up all that huge fridge space. That's right. So if you can brine it for a minimum of two hours, but a maximum of 24. Okay, all right. Okay. So you, so it's in the brine. It's, it's in there out. loving its life. It's marinating. It's marinating. Yeah. You take it out, and what's our next step? <laughs> butter. Butter. Oh, is that what that it's is? It's butter. And Look at, go oh, just a little pepper. bit of butter, Listen, though. Not that much. It, no, it's gonna, a lot of it's going to fall off, Tracy. I have it's no fine. problem with yeah. it. I've got no and problem with it. turkey is so lean that you can get away with a little bit of extra butter, right? Yeah. So then we're going to go heavy kosher salt. Gorgeous. And then keep things really simple because we're all a lot of that flavor is going in the gravy as well. Yeah. Just some black pepper. So are you ready for this? I'm ready for it. And you know what? I'm already exciting about this, excited about this because there's something about doing the whole bird. There's so many question marks in terms of, is it ready? Yes. Now we're going to have to carve the whole thing. Everyone's watching. Yes. Everyone's freaking out. Don't freak out. You don't have to freak out. So now this way, it's all in different pieces. So you throw it in the oven. In she goes super high heat. We're going yeah. like... 450 for like 20 minutes until it gets crispy and then bring it down to 350. Okay. Now, once you get hit internal temperature of 165, you pull it, Ooh. let it rest, but then think about yeah. this. All your guests are coming over. You pull this out of the oven. Beautiful. Your gravy's already done. Yeah. And it's this simple. That looks beautiful, <laughs> right? So you still have the whole presentation aspect of it. Oh my gosh, that looks good. It's still steaming a little really bit. Good. It's kind of like, but here's where all your hard work pays off. Yeah. Because in my house when I was a kid, the turkey would come out whole. Yeah. And all the ants would be in the kitchen, and it was like, man, they were hitting each other. They don't know, like, how do we get the gravy? Are we going cornstarch? Are we going flour? And then who's going to carve it? Like, you don't know who's going to carve it. <laughs> And all the guys are a little nervous. They're like, we don't want to get in there. It. This is like so easy because it's boneless. We did keep the bones in the leg. But basically what we can do now is we just take this breast and we just carve. And like now you carve it up. No this. one's sweating. It's okay. You take your time. But I just want to show you just like. Look at we can, that. Oh. I mean, if we're talking like oh. healthy, lean proteins, you're going to get that with Canadian turkey. And that's why we love it. You can do so many things with it, but I, I can just to. tell that's full of flavor. Okay. I just need you to. I, I just it. need you to. Because I'm going to try it, even without gravy. I don't I need was kind of hoping you'd just pick up the whole piece. I could have cut it a oh, little bit smaller. I'm trying to be a lady pork. here. <laughs> you went right for the skin, too. I did. I like that. we got to have a skin. Okay, so a lot of people, yes. this is delicious. A lot of people are like, you know, how do you keep the turkey tender? Mm -hmm. Is it your whole turning the oven up to begin with? Because I got to tell you, Leo did that for our last Thanksgiving, and he wanted to call you on Thanksgiving to say that his mother-in-law loved his turkey. It was the Randy Feltis recipe. You don't yeah. want to overcook it, right? So you okay. want to get it to that internal temperature, and then you want to turn it right down. It's but delicious. then to plate this up is only going to take a few minutes. Right, and you, I like to go a little bit thicker too because you know I call it fork tender. You just get the <laughs> fork and it goes right through. But now the best Shall part is the discuss? gravy was made the day before because you had all the bones and you did your stock and roasted it off. Yeah. And then you have the opportunity to get the right consistency and the right seasoning. And I mean, like you can do this two ways. You're gonna put like you're good. I don't even know if I can hold that. <laughs> Well, I was going to cowboy like it, but you know, maybe we'll just kind of go the easy way. It. But you know what, Tracy? It's TV. Let's just You're going to go it. for it. I'm going to go. I don't know if this is a good idea. I think it's a good idea. You're doing it. Oh, my God. What a pro. Look at that. You know what? Look you at that. You know what? what? <laughs> Not bad at all. You got your gravy boat. You got your thing. And it's just like. It's a beautiful thing. And remember, magical. every time you buy a Canadian turkey, who are we supporting? You're supporting a local Canadian oh. turkey farmer. That's right. Beautiful meal. We love it. It's Thanksgiving at the cottage. We're going to break. Look at that. A few little trips. Just That's a couple fine. little ones. There we Still. go. Welcome back. It's City Line Thanksgiving at the cottage. And we are giving you all 
all of the Thanksgiving tablescape inspo you could possibly manage with the queen of tablescapes herself, Sarah Gunn. Take a look at this one she calls Pumpkin Patch. Today, let's give them pumpkin to talk about with this cookie. <laughs> pumpkin to talk about. Today, let's give them pumpkin to talk about with this creative Thanksgiving tablescape. This look is great for those of you who like to have a little fun with your tables. To create a cozy base, I started with the floor runner. And yes, I actually said floor runner, not table runner. It adds a really cozy feel to the table with the texture and the gray and white pattern. Almost feels like a sweater, like it's hugging your table. And you'll find a lot of floor runners are actually the right length for tables that seat six people. These beautiful dinner plates with a fluted detailed edge in this soft cream and the cream napkins from HomeSense act as a really great neutral base for each place setting. You wanna add some pattern to your tablescape too with these gorgeous salad plates. When combining different patterns or colors of dinnerware, you wanna make sure they're in the same color family. So if the plate is cream, look for a cream background on your pattern plate as well. Next up, I'm adding these beautiful textured glasses. They give sort of a vintage feel to each place setting, which I love. The final touch for each place setting is to add in this matte black flatware. It might be a little bit unexpected, but it really grounds the whole look. Now for the centerpiece, let's pumpkin spice things up a bit. I'm sorry, I just can't help it. Start with a layer of faux greenery, working your way down from the outside of the table towards the middle. Now, a lot of those branches can feel really long, so don't be afraid to trim them with a wire cutter so they're not sticking out all over the table. Then layer in pumpkins of different heights and shapes, starting from the middle and working your way out to smaller ones. Add small glass jars and shades of green to pull that color of the greenery up onto the table. Finish the look with these sweet velvet pears from Gun & Co in shades of different greens and creams. Now what I love most about this centerpiece is that once dinner is over, you can style it all on your mantle or a console table and leave it out as decor all season long. Give your guests a little something sweet at each place setting with little mini jars filled with even smaller chocolate chip cookies. Personalize them with a fun label and I promise your guests are gonna love them a pumpkin latte. <laughs> Sarah never misses when it comes to a beautiful tablescape. We also got to say a big thank you to Verbo for this gorgeous, cozy cottage that we're filming in today. I mean, the whole thing about getting a Verbo is if you're having a Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving, you get a big kitchen, you get maybe a double oven. In our case, you get a beautiful sauna, a hot tub, all the gorgeous things, and you don't have to clean up before you have everyone over, which is awesome. Speaking of gorgeous things, this beautiful yard and your setup jaw dropping <laughs> this is the life i want to live it's aspirational outside picnic but done so elegantly and you didn't necessarily use sort of the regular everyday things for a picnic no you want to get creative you know i thought it would be fun this time of year it's so gorgeous outside let's eat outside and enjoy it while we can before it starts no way Don't say the s word i know okay? um but i i understand that not everyone has like low tables at home or maybe a rug you want to bring outside but yeah. look at your local event rental places and you'll be surprised how inexpensive it is so these are from naos in toronto the rug the rug and the tables and it's like 35 dollars to rent a rug which i think for something like this it's worth it, yeah, right? It's absolutely. very reasonable. So it's just a fun way to sort of elevate it a little bit from a traditional picnic. You were really smart to put a little bit of plastic underneath uh, the rug here because it's probably, there's gonna be dew, yeah. or maybe a little bit of condensation. Right. So this is gonna be fantastic for that. Yeah, and it's just a drop cloth for painting. So that's oh, really good. inexpensive. Yeah, very nice. So next up, talk to me a little bit about this tablecloth because it's not the tablecloth that you would think it might be. No, it's not. You know how I like to use things in new ways. Yeah. So this is actually a blanket and I thought the pattern was very very picnic inspired. It's really cozy and soft, which feels like fall. Yeah. And once the table's set, you'll see how it really pulls all the colors of all the elements together too. It is beautiful. Okay, do you wanna talk a little bit about what we've got on the table? Yeah, well, let's add something to it first. Sure. So because the table's so big, we're so far apart, there's this big empty spot in the middle. Yeah. I wanted to fill it with something really beautiful. Okay. And this is a vintage basket that I found oh. when I was antique shopping. Gorgeous. a couple weeks ago and um, I filled it with these faux branches. The one thing you want to keep in mind when you're filling something like this is to put a little bit of chicken wire in the basket first and then that's really going to help you place everything perfectly and hold the shape yeah. and it was inspired by when we were kids uh, on Thanksgiving mom would have us go outside and pick really beautiful colorful leaves and place them on the table so this is sort of my take on that. Listen, my mom got us to do that now awesome. I get the kids to do that and this is what I really love about this this holiday. And I was saying that to Julia Grieve as well. She was saying, bring all of the things in yes. and make the centerpiece. And then it's like casual vibe, yeah. 
Yours is a little bit like elevated cash. Like this is stunning. But I would put this away every year. Yes. And bring it out every year. Like this Absolutely. is for life. Uh, totally. And you could use real branches too, which I think would be oh, so stunning. That's nice too. But you're right. This is something that you can use over and over again or put it somewhere else in your house when you're done, which is great too. Okay. Let's talk about what you did for the place settings because okay. I want you to take my placemat I, home. Isn't that cool? It's actually. Like, this is amazing. They're really chunky cutting boards. And I thought yes. that that's bringing another element of nature on the table, which I think is really fun. It's beautiful. And then we're going to layer in the other elements. So I found this dinnerware. Okay. That is sort of has a harvest inspired pattern, yeah. which I think is really beautiful. So you're just going to set your plate on there. And then I don't normally match my dinnerware, but the patterns of these are different enough that I think they still make it feel really special. So Lovely. you layer that in. Okay. And then just tuck your napkin underneath both of those. Oh, is that how you do it? Yes. And you know what? The napkin's just a really simple, plain one. Not everything at the table has to be a showstopper because then it's all competing with each other and yeah. then your eye doesn't really have a break. So keep some things really simple. And the same thing with the flatware. So I've got this beautiful gold. Oh, it's so good brushed flatware which is so beautiful and yeah. it's like fall colors too right the golds it is it's lovely flatware that you can't bring this stuff in enough like i love when you bring them in for your tablescapes because so pretty they just feel so luxe yes and speaking of luxe let's talk about the little centerpiece you have okay i love to personalize every place setting of course so this time i found these really sweet bud vases they're shaped like pears again it's bringing those fall colors to your centerpiece which is lovely yeah. and then i added just these fresh flowers and you put those on each place setting. And then, because your guests may get a little thirsty. Yeah. I've also introduced, you've got the greens at your place setting that pull from the dinnerware. Yes. Now look at these gorgeous glasses. They're so I harvest. went with two different, right? Yeah, beautiful. And they're pulling the colors from the tablecloth. They're pulling the colors from the centerpiece and the dinnerware. And just really finishing that whole fall theme that we have going on with the table. Okay, we gotta talk about what we're sitting on. I'm yes. way more comfortable than I thought I would be <laughs> yeah. sitting on the ground outside. And it's because of these beautiful cushions. Yes. So I had something in my mind that I wanted and I could not find it anywhere. So I happened to be walking by the dog section of HomeSense and I saw these velvet cushions. These are for the dogs? They're dog beds. Okay, and they are Fido. absolutely perfect. Wow. And then just mix and match again, pulling other colors from the table with different cushions, with different textures and the same sort of fall tones. Yeah. And it's so cozy, we could stay here all day. Oh my gosh, totally. And then when it does get a little chilly at night, you've thought about that. You've yes. got blankets back there. Oh yeah, because we don't want to have to get up and go inside. So just cozy up under blankets and you can stay here all day. Sarah Gunn, fantastic. So good. It's City Line, doing Thanksgiving at the cottage. We're going to break. Stay with us. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> it's tempting right now. I'm really hot. Welcome back to City Lines Thanksgiving at the cottage. We're in this gorgeous cottage. Very cool. There is a sauna <laughs> behind us, which I would love to use. And we are at, we're in the solarium. So this is the room with all the light and the goodness and the drinks. You betcha. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about drinks to get us through. Maybe you've got that aunt and uncle you've been avoiding and you got to need a few things to sip on to get through the big day. Maybe it's a mocktail. Either way, it's so cool to have a signature drink. Like, do yes. you do that for your yes. Thanksgiving? Yes. I, I am the signature drink girl. Love like, it. Like, I'm, like, slightly obsessed with it. Yeah. Like, you know, girls are coming over for wine on Tuesday. It's not wine at my house. <laughs> no, I'm mixing up something. I wouldn't consider myself a mixologist. Yeah. I'm just an enthusiast. You don't need to be a mixologist. Right? It's just the Julia Greaves special today, exactly. everybody. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I've mixed up some cocktails, Tracy, that yeah. are the tastes of the season. Okay. So these are t inspired by flavors and things that we would have Ooh. during Thanksgiving, during the fall season. Yeah. And it would become a signature cocktail because nothing gets the party started like a signature cocktail. It makes you excited when you right. walk in the door and it's like, and the signature it, cocktail It just is. makes it so fancy. It yeah. makes it so much more. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the, what I want you to do is try and guess. Oh, You're going to help me a little bit. Okay. So you're going to try and guess what the flavor class. is. So here, I'm going to give you a lime. So we're going to first start with this drink. So we're going to, okay. we're just going to rim the, put the lime around the outside and part of this drink the key is what this rim is so you can sort of really get in there the rim looks delicious right 
right? Okay, okay sorry. I'm, I'm hogging. I'm hogging. That's okay. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of ice into this one for you. Get a bit more on there. And then I'm going to stay. Stay. I know. Stay. That's oh, okay. you it's got enough. it. It's Look at there. You go. Right? Yeah, you got it. Okay. A little bit of ice. There we go. Shaky shakes. Okay. Let me pour it for you. And then I want you to oh, tell me okay. what this tastes like and what drink I make. What is this? Well, the color is reminding me of something. Hold on. Here, I'm going to give you a little floater. Okay, no, you go. Go, go, go. Get in there. What do you think it is? What are you tasting? Oh my God, it's delicious. Right? The pumpkin? Yes! Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a Thanksgiving margarita. It's really Okay, good. so the secret ingredient is obviously the pumpkin puree. Ooh. We've got tequila in there, you've got Grand Marnier, all the things, let's have a little sip here. You know Ooh. what, if you had told me that you're gonna make me a pumpkin margarita or a Thanksgiving margarita, I would have said no. This, but that's it's it. It's delicious. It's so good, and what really mm. ties it all together is that rim that's brown sugar oh, and cinnamon. Oh. So it's that warming feeling. This will get your so Thanksgiving going. Have a table of them ready to go when people walk in the door. Yeah. Don't give them a choice. It's a Thanksgiving margarita. Go get it for going. it. It's Absolutely. flavor town. Yes. Okay, moving right along to this one, which looks beautiful. Okay, so this one to me is the taste of Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. And I'll give you a hint. It's yeah. not mashed potatoes. Okay. <laughs> as much as I love mashed potatoes, I did not put them in a cocktail. Yeah. So Thank this you. one is, so do you have any ideas? I mean, kind of might be able to guess by what we're looking at here. I'm thinking it's a fruit. Yeah. Probably cranberry yes. flavored. Like we're doing some cranberry, which is always a great flavor for yes. food or drinks. Okay. Right? But here's the, here's the, here's the kicker with this drink. Yeah. It is actually cranberry sauce. So it is not the just sauce is in the there? sauce is in the base of this drink. Oh my god. So when you're setting the table, make sure you save That's enough of the cranberry is. sauce for this. And have a little taste of it. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, tell me what you Let me think. Try this. Delicious. Right? And fresh. Okay, so and what, tangy. I know. What did you put in You're here? You're so good. I love all your words. It's like, like, mm, you'd be like, I know, right? Tart. Tart. Fresh lemon juice. Mm -hmm. But the base of the uh, drink, as uh, well with the cranberry sauce, is um, a sangria. Oh. And what I absolutely love about this, Tracy, yeah. is that this is the one that you can so mocktail it with your eyes closed. Yeah. Just use a non-alcoholic wine. Right. Really, really simple. Yeah. So this is a great to have a batch of non-alcoholic available yes. as well as this one. Make your mocktails. I knew there was some Spain in there. Yeah, I right. Tasted did, you, did you taste so Spain? Some, I tasted Spain. Spain and with, with Canadian there. Thanksgiving. Come on. <laughs> Put it all together. together. It equals an amazing drink. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Moving right along, we have this gorgeous concoction here. So what am I, what are we doing with this? Okay, this one, and the reason that I absolutely love this one is this is what you can make in bulk. The yeah. big friends giving, yes. all this stuff is hilarious. The recipe calls says that it makes for 16 cocktails. Yeah. Or one if your family starts talking about politics. <laughs> <laughs> the whole right. thing. And you might just need that. Yeah. Again. Uncle Bob you starts going again. It. Yeah. So what you're going to use is you can use a gin or a vodka as the base. Okay. I've used Hidden Temple gin because I love it. So we're going to add, you're going to mix this for me. So we're going to yep. add three and a half cups of the gin right into there. This is a good way to do it. Right? These things, when it comes to ease of serving, everyone serves themselves and you can go and have a good exactly. day yourself. Then we're going to throw in about three to four cups of pear juice. Okay. Okay. Okay, looking good, Trace, looking good. This now, is here is the secret ingredient, which will give mm. us all the tastes of Thanksgiving. Okay. Do you want me to tell you what it is, or can you guess by even smelling? I don't know, I thought it was gonna be lemon juice, but that's no, not lemon juice. you know juice. what this is? This is a simple syrup, yeah. and it's the base of the simple syrup. So simple syrup is basically sugar and water, right? That's right. It's in all cocktails. Yeah. But the base of it is sage. So when oh, you think of sage, we think of stuffing, yes. right? So great. And so then just top it off with some sparkling water. Oh, nice. And oh, then we're ready it. to go. That's it. You've got your this big, cocktail. This is going to be cocktail. so good. I know. Right? So, sorry. It's sage. That's the secret That's ingredient. That's the secret ingredient. You've got pear yeah. juice, but the... the um, the simple syrup is made with sage and a little bit of ginger, so it's really good. So okay, it's just a great. We're all out of time, but can I just pour you a drink? Oh gosh, come on! There you go. <laughs> thank you so much. Enjoy that, and thank you so much for these incredible cocktails. Oh Let's gosh, go to break. Amazing. City Line is celebrating Thanksgiving at the cottage. Cheers! Cheers! This one's really good. Isn't it good? Really good. Welcome.
welcome back. It's City Line doing Thanksgiving at the cottage, and we're having a great time. We're back in the kitchen. Yes. So we've got the beautiful Canadian turkey. We need the sides to go with the turkey. You like the right? sides a lot. I like the sides a lot. Yeah. The turkey's gorgeous, but I love the sides. And you always manage to elevate our sides. So what, like, I don't even we know what get, you're going to do this year. We can get fancy. I mean, listen, you've got to have the mashed potatoes. You yes. have to have the stuffing. Those yes. are like, you know, we've done those a thousand times, we right? Have. So what if we did some things that are a little bit more playful? And normally if you're at the cottage or even if you're at home, you sometimes run out of cooking utensils. You do. So we're going to make some sweet potato stacks using a muffin tin today. Okay. Because, you know, this one always sits out. It's in the cupboard. It's very lonely yeah, around Thanksgiving. Absolutely. So we're going to put it to work today. Give it some love. Use it. I don't know how you're going to use this. <laughs> so what you need to do when you're at the grocery store, you know, the sweet potatoes are almost always the same kind of length. They kind yeah. of fit in there perfectly. So you're going to want to peel those down. <laughs> And then this is a bit of a knife skill kind of thing, like you can get some practice there. Okay. And you want to go like maybe two millimeters. Oh, so you're doing like a thin cut. Would you thin ever do cut. a mandolin or you don't want it that thin? I mean, you could, but you know. It doesn't have to be that fancy. cheating. Okay. And they bite <laughs> and you know, you can practice your knife skills. Get the kids to do I'm it. I'm always looking for the cheat there, chef. Yeah, that's you know okay. That. No, if you have a mandolin at home, absolutely, because it'll be nice and uniform. <laughs> so this is what we're basically looking for, Trace, like something like that, right? Beautiful. So now we have like sweet potato chips. Yeah. Right? A little bit thicker. Okay. Kettle chips. Kettle I chips. need some salt and pepper in there, pretty oh, please. I was like, let me just pick this up. It's like magnetized to the mm -hmm. island. A little bit of that. A little of that. Maybe a little bit of more. Can you give me a pepper twist as well? Let's see if I do this Look right. Oh, you. I got it. Yeah, you can come Remember to Remember back in the day when anytime. I would be like, why is it not working? <laughs> <laughs> you nailed that one. And then we just have a little bit of garlic and olive oil. You can also use butter depending on where you're at. Beautiful. But we're going olive oil today. So all I need now, Tracy, is two sprigs of thyme. You got it. You know, this is very hard. We don't I got want the, the stems thyme. in there. You got this? I got it. You say a little you bit can't of that. Cook. You got this too. Well, lately, you know what? I've been lying a little bit because I am more in the kitchen these days, mostly for myself. Um, but oh. yeah, I can do a little something, something. I've you watched know, enough City Line. You know, I'm, I have a confession. Seeing how we're making things. We're making confessions. We're making confessions today. You don't cook and you're not a chef? No, no, no. Okay, I simply don't. So that's all I do, really. Um, <laughs> I do know how to do laundry. I just Should we tell Catherine? Do. She knows. Okay. I just don't do it to her standards. <laughs> Got which it. is just perfect. Yes. That's why she's the one. She can do all the things. I'm so impressed by Catherine. You're all right, too. Yeah, but it's yeah. All good. She's and pretty then, amazing. Did you see that? So you just basically pick them up in the bowl here, slap them down like that, and then we just fill up all of those. So and like a little sweet potato tower. A little sweet potato tower. Yeah. And so we're going to bake, I think, at 375, 400 for like 38 minutes. Oh, that was very specific. But CityLine.TV for the rest of you, yeah, but obviously yeah, he knows it. Yeah, double check those because sometimes double I check. make that stuff up. <laughs> but what you really want to find there, what you want to look for is the caramelization. As soon as those top Ooh. chips start getting a little bit more caramelized, yeah. we know that we are in good form. So. 38 minutes has gone by. Oh, yeah, it was 38 minutes. And it's it? time to rescue our little sweet potato Bur towers. Burr Do you have a cute name for these? Because they are... Beautiful. Yeah, they have little sweet potato stacks with thyme and yeah. garlic, right? And then this is kind of cute because everyone, That's you know, awesome. some people they grab huge mashed potatoes and they're throwing it on the plate. Yeah. And you're as a cook, you're like, hey, you don't eat that much. You're Simmer like, take down. it easy, man. Where these are all portioned out. Yeah. And so it's like, Billy, just have one, man. It's okay. <laughs> Calm down. And it's kind of a cute little thing that everyone's going to add to their plate. They're so Isn't cute. Isn't that gorgeous? They're adorable. Okay, so. We've done the sweet potato stacks. Yes. Are we going to shoot this or can I have a little bit? I just want to have a little bit. You don't have a little. I got, a whole, a, little I got a whole tray. You let me know what you think. I just want to try it because it looks so good. But I know that you've got another side for us. I got another side, but you go ahead with that. Mm. We're going to talk about salads. That's it's nice, good. Isn't it? Okay, we have a couple minutes still. So, yeah. Okay, so salads. I think they get kind of forgotten at Thanksgiving, and it's nice yeah. to have something clean and refreshing at the table. And green. And green. Get your greens in. Right. And so what we need to do is choose a lettuce that's going to stand up, because sometimes the timing is an issue. You're waiting for other things. And so we've got an escarole and a curly endive here. Beautiful. So that'll allow it to like stand up, but a it'll still be bitter. crispy and delicious. Yeah. I'm going to bring this time back. But basically... Yeah. You're going to have all your mise en place kind of cut. And if you want to portion this like half an hour in advance, that's okay too. Nice. So we got cherry tomatoes. I like that. Right. This is where we start getting a Tis little bit season. more seasonal. We got some toasted pecans mm, here. I love that. You're going to like those, right? It gives it a little crunch. And now you got some vegetables. We got some grilled corn. 
And I made this butter vinaigrette, which I'm going to show you. And I kind of used the vinaigrette on the corn on the grill. Nice. And so you're using the outdoor cooking as well, so you're not just crowded inside. Yeah, take note because the. Sometimes you need to get out of the kitchen. It's a busy place a right busy now, place. so it's and nice to go use the you know, barbecue. If you've got an outdoor fridge out there with a couple beers in it, sometimes you just have to <laughs> go use that really grill. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> so this vinaigrette is actually made with butter, hot honey, oh. garlic, and lemon juice. And then what you're going to do to get this kind of like... you slap people now, with that? No, What's well, happening? I mean, if they take too much smashed potato, I will. Um, and then we're just going to kind of induce <laughs> that in there. And then we're just gonna layer this. Oh over my the goodness! Salad, Look at the right? technique. So just like, oh, it's getting drippy. It's raining butter, honey. Here, yes. Butter, honey, citrus. Oh, that is beautiful. And then we're gonna finish it off. You know, nothing With is complete cheese. without some feta. Very Canadian nice. Feta. There we go. Oh my gosh! I just, I don't know. I'm getting everything out of the way because it's that important. <laughs> that is a beautiful, gorgeous, fresh-looking salad, chef. The sides are amazing. They stand up to the glory that is the Canadian turkey. Thank you so much for that. No problem, thank you. We are missing one thing though, and I feel like it's cranberry sauce. Oh yeah. That's a big deal. Actually, Chef MDP went out to do his own cranberry foraging. Yes, he did. Check this out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, I've been asked to be on some pretty wild assignments for my time at City Line, but this might just take the cake. I'm in the middle of a cranberry bog here at Muskoka Lakes Farm and Winery. Let's have some fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody loves cranberries, but do you know how they're harvested? There is two wet methods. First, I'm sitting in a cranberry bog that has been flooded. The cranberries are knocked off the vine, and now the bog is flooded where they're gonna be corralled and harvested. Let's go see the other way. Captain Cranberry. With this dry harvest, what would this be called? Um, so we do have a machine that can go along and yeah. rake the, the cranberries off the vines okay. with a machine. Um, but the challenge is it does, it damages the vines. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard for us to get the fruit off the bed. And we also lose a lot of the fruit. Cranberries do not grow in water. <laughs> I know <sighs> it's, uh, it's one of the biggest uh, <laughs> misunderstandings around cranberries. And the reason we flood at harvest time is because it just makes picking a whole lot easier. So low growing, woody evergreen vine. Yeah, this would be pretty labor intensive to just start picking these. How many would be normally typically on, a, on one of the uprights? Yeah, it's three to five. Three to five. Look at this, fresh off the vine. Well, Thank you, Wendy. And while you do that, I'm gonna show you something Chef's else. Chef's kiss. Wow, please. Cranberries have four air chambers in them. Oh, wow. And that's why they float. is green we're picking it out if something's got you know a, a stem on it right. we're taking off the stem a little cut for example or a big cut yeah yeah there you go so we're taking that sort of stuff can out. i be part of the qa team part of the eating qa <laughs> team here i have to ask you what is your favorite way to have cranberries i gotta say cranberry wine cranberry wine absolutely we can be good friends Oh my goodness, MDP out there with the cranberries, incredible. I have not seen a cranberry bog in Ontario. The last one I saw was in New England. Very cool. We are going to break. It's City Line Thanksgiving at the cottage. Stay with us. Welcome back to City Line. We're doing Thanksgiving at the cottage, and oh my goodness, what a cottage we are at. Gorgeous. This beautiful, it's a Verbo, uh, and the thing about Verbo is you get beautiful whole spaces like this. They offer whole private homes, plenty of space, so families, groups of friends, or whomever you call your people can stay together. It's been uh, a ton of fun being here. So. You've got your people, you've got your friends, you've got your family. Mm -hmm. They're coming to your spot for Thanksgiving. We have to talk about rules and regulations. We have to talk about etiquette, my friends, because there are things that you should do and you shouldn't do. So if you are hosting, 
and I'm gonna run this by all of you. If you are hosting, do you invite your family first and then everyone else? Or do you just invite anyone and it's a free for all and whoever shows up, shows up? Sarah, how about you? Uh, I would do them separately. <laughs> separately? Is that terrible of me? I would no. do a Friendsgiving and a family oh, Thanksgiving. you don't even have the meat. I don't think so. It's okay. a different level of fun. So, yes. Sorry, family. I'm actually with you. I love you. my family, but it's a, di it's a different sort of vibe. So yeah. I would do my family, which I love doing all that and getting everyone together. Yeah. And then I would do friends and then just have it a little later at night on a different day. It makes sense to me mm -hmm. because every cluster you have in your life are there for different reasons. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. Yep. yes. It's yeah. not all, they're not all created equal. So yeah. maybe you want to do your Friendsgiving very differently than your family Thanksgiving. A little bit. Right? How about yeah. you, Ran? Yeah, I have to agree. Once in a while, we'll bring a friend in. Yeah. Like maybe, but it just, it doesn't feel the same. Yeah. But what we've done recently, we brought both sides of the family How in. How does that go? You know, surprisingly well. Okay. Yeah, you okay. know, it's good if you have the pool still running, you've got yes. something to go on. But yeah, it's it's going well, and, and then you get both parties done at once. That's mm -hmm. true. So you just kill two birds with one stone. You can yeah. wake up the next day and feel free, and go to your friend's givings after that. Yeah. Right, because yeah. then it's party time. Uh, see? I yes. will tell you this: I met both sides. I felt I met Catherine's family. I met your family, and they're all good people. Yeah, so nice that's probably why it all works. No fighting. It was pretty good. Yeah, awesome. like they're all just chill, good yes. people. Okay, what about this potluck for Thanksgiving? Oh God, it has to be. Oh, you uh, like that? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. With the numbers that we do, oh, that's absolutely. True. Twenty-two. You can't do a sit-down sit dinner. Oh, that you no, cook and everybody's up. Yeah, on, and, and, and especially when you have, if it's a family that you're doing year after year after year, yeah. you just know. Like yeah. my cousin John was always on buns. I'm like, yes. why does he get buns? Yeah. Like, oh, like, mom, I would have taken buns. Like, <laughs> you know the salad. Maybe, I know the salad. Maybe usually that's all they're capable of. Well, that's right. yes. exactly. yes. yeah. He goes and, and then, buys the big yeah. bag of buns and yeah. he's done. Yeah, totally. And, and then, then you're like, can you do the ham and the turkey? <laughs> I can make the sauce, you know? And then the other thing that we always have too, when you have large family and, you know, moving parts, you know, husbands, wives, divorces, all this yeah. sort of stuff, my mom was always really strict. There's no plus one. I need oh. a full name. I need full name, last name, okay. one month before. Wow. Otherwise, they're not coming. Oh, I, I love like your mom. This. I'm like very strict on that. Oh yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, this is okay, a big thing. I don't mind showing up to the potluck, but I like, I don't want to bring something to this. <laughs> Yeah. Wine is always acceptable. Okay, yeah. good. Wine if is that's my contribution, right. then sure. I will do yes. the potluck. Yeah. But like, yeah, either I'm hosting at all or, or not. Okay, what about bringing flowers? I don't. I'm not fussy about this as long as you're okay when you bring the flowers. I'm not putting it in a vase right away. But do you mind people bringing you flowers, Sarah? You're a flower. I love when people bring me flowers. And yeah. I would say for me, I have lots of vessels at home because of that's just my thing. So I have lots of places to put them. But if you're yeah. going to come to someone's house like you that maybe wouldn't have a vase that you want to just grab yeah. and put it in. Bring it in a vase, okay. and then that's part of the gift. Oh. So it's already ready to go. So it's yeah. not wrapped in the paper and plastic and stuff. Yeah. You've already trimmed them. You put them in a cute little vase. They don't have yeah. to be expensive. And then it's that's the gift. But are you okay with them just giving you the flowers without a vase, or is that like a faux pas? I prefer it because then I get to do whatever I want with <laughs> yeah. them. But, I don't mind but most it. people probably would like yeah. like it already arranged. So yeah. it's not an extra job for them to do the day that they're hosting already. Oh, right, valid. it's done. Flowers are always a good idea. And I want to say, I want to give all my flowers to you all for being with us here for Thanksgiving. Sarah Gunn, Randy Feltis, Julia Grieve, fantastic. I feel inspired. How much of it will I actually do? I don't know. We're definitely <laughs> celebrating your recipes. Sure. We on. always do. Thanks for joining us at home. We hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving. And we'll see you tomorrow on City Line. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 This is my favorite part. There we go.